All right, what's going on you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, a follow-up on the Midwest Kong versus Kevin DeHawk Washington, the 225 bench press for reps competition. Um, If you guys were following this beef, they've had a lot of back and forth on social media for the past several months leading up to C.T. Fletcher's Iron Wars. And they finally had that confrontation. Um, and shout out, by the way, to Eric Ramirez, who's the only one that I saw actually upload a video of the actual bench off between the two. But to summarize it for you, Midwest Kong starts things off. He goes first. He's going to set the bar. He gets to about 30 reps. And it looks like he injures himself. He drops the bar, um, he possibly tore or tweaked his pec. I don't know exactly what happened there, but... He looks like he got injured, dropped the bar at 30 reps. So he stopped at 30 reps. DeHawk gets on and ties him with 30. Says he doesn't want to beat the guy while he's injured. So they tie, essentially. But I guess you could make the argument that, you know, it was pretty clear that DeHawk could have gone even further and, you know, well beyond 30. But he only stopped to be a good sport. So essentially they're having a rematch in May. I think they said May 20th. So overall, very underwhelming result. And it looks like we're going to have to wait like five more months to figure out who is actually stronger, if anyone is actually still following along with this beef. Now, speaking of beefs and rivalries, Thor Bjornsson versus Eddie Hall. Thor in a post on Instagram today confirmed that the fight with Eddie will be in March. He uploaded this training footage um, and then says, March it is. And that's like a month away. And honestly, I'm kind of surprised they haven't done more promo or announced this earlier. Um, because honestly, you know, I've seen kind of the sentiment in the comments whenever I talk about Thor or Eddie, it seems like people are rapidly losing interest in that fight because it's been so long and it's been so drawn out. It's not as fresh as it was when Thor first broke Eddie's deadlift record. Um, the 501 KG deadlift back then was kind of when people wanted to see it, it was still fresh. And then the fight got postponed because Eddie got injured and now it looks like it's happening in March. And I really almost never see anybody asking about it so i guess my question to you guys today is are you still invested in this fight do you still care is this something you want to watch will you be purchasing the pay-per-view assuming there is one let me know in the comments down below now also in the news we've got a physique update from brandon curry posted by his coach coach abdullah just less than five weeks out now from the arnold classic and i'm going to talk more because we got a lot of physique updates this this past weekend um, of a lot of the competitors competing in the arnold brandon curry was one of them now brandon posted his own video a few days ago but he says that it was a throwback from the olympia prep so his coach coach abdullah posted this on his Instagram story. Now, Brandon basically hasn't posted anything as far as recent physique updates going into the Arnold. So to me, it looks like Brandon wants to keep things under wraps. So to a lot of the people that were sending me this video asking me if I think it was recent, personally, I don't. Even though Abdullah posted it, I think they're they're really trying to... uh, they're really trying to add an element of mystery here. They haven't posted anything. If they were going to post anything, I think they would have already. I think Brandon wants to come in this show, dominate, and leave. By the numbers, statistically, Brandon is the best bodybuilder in that lineup. He's a Mr. Olympia champion. He's a former Arnold Classic champion. He's the highest placer at the Olympia from last year, second place to Big Rami. He doesn't need to post anything. He probably wants these guys competing to be constantly wondering what is Brandon going to look like. They're, you know, in the back of their mind, I think everybody is comparing themselves to Brandon because they know he's he's the likely incumbent to win here. So do I think this is a recent update? No. I think Abdullah and Brandon might be playing a little bit of mind games there, and that's that's all well and good. I think Brandon, again, he's my prediction to win. I think this is his show to win or lose. And speaking of this show, now a word from our sponsors, the Arnold Classic. I think that every bodybuilder has something unique, especially the bodybuilders today. I mean, wow, they are big. Now, getting into some of these Arnold Classic physique updates. First off, you had Regan Grimes looking for some redemption after that 15th place placing at the Olympia. He just won that KO Pro Show in Egypt. Um, he's now working with Milo Sarshev, hopefully you know, developing a physique that's going to be a different, much tighter package than what he brought to the Olympia and looking to improve upon what he brought to that KO Pro Show in Egypt for the victory there. Now, if he's able to do that, 
Is he going to be a top six guy here? Is he going to be a top three guy here? This is going to be a redemption show for him. And he also got second at Legion, by the way, to Sean Clarita, a.k.a. the Giant Killer. So that's Regan at five weeks out. Now an update from Brett Wilkin. Well, we should say about four weeks out at this point. Brett Wilkin posted courtesy of his coach, Matt Jansen. Brett Wilkin is another guy. Second place at Chicago to Hunter Labrada. He's another guy that I think is kind of a wild card dark horse. Um, He looks very impressive here. He looks much bigger than he looked in Chicago, although I think one of the strongest points of his physique in Chicago was his conditioning and his small waist. As long as he keeps those two things, I think he's going to do very well here. So hopefully he doesn't sacrifice some conditioning for size. Now, next up, we have Akeem Williams. So Akeem posted this update to his story. He does not say when it was taken, if it was recent or not. It looks like it likely was recent, though, especially as close as we're getting to the show And as many competitors as we're seeing start to post now, um, I would assume that this was recent. Now, Akeem is always a wild card. Now, Akeem is always a bit of a wild card. He was top six at the Olympia in 2020, and then this year he dropped significantly in placing down to ninth. And I think last year he was actually my wild card pick to win the Arnold Classic, and that was way wrong too. So he dropped from the top six to ninth at the Olympia, and he wound up in fifth at last year's 2021 Arnold Classic. Now, the reason why I say Akeem is still a wild card is because this is all dependent on his conditioning. If you look at his structure here in this front double bicep, This has got to be arguably one of the most impressive front double biceps by structure in the IFBB. The size that he has and the size that he carries in his back that is evident also in the front, you know, the lats from the front and the front double bicep, um, the actual peaks of his biceps, the size of his arms, the, the tight waist with the size that he carries, very impressive structure, especially from the front. But conditioning is that thing that he just seems to be so inconsistent with. If he came in peeled to the bone, Imagine this physique with Hadi Chupin-like conditioning, cross striations in the quads, super striated glutes, super striated hamstrings, separated hamstrings rather. This is a Mr. Olympia winner caliber physique in condition. So this is always someone I say we should never count out of any lineup. And he's always someone I say we should pay close attention to because he could be anywhere from top three to outside of the top 10 just based on that conditioning. Another guy I consider a wild card, Justin Luis Rodriguez. His Tuesday morning, you know, less than five weeks out check-in was at 275.8 pounds. Pretty big guy. I mean, that's a pretty big dude for this close to a show to be weighing 275. That's not a small bodybuilder. He was top four at the Arnold last year, and it's actually worth noting he placed ahead of Akeem Williams at the Olympia. He took eighth place there. So 2021 was a hell of a year for Justin, and I think he's definitely a guy that is on the verge um, of having a breakout year in 2022. And look, we don't just have to talk about men's open bodybuilding here. we got to talk about classic physique as well. And we've talked a lot about Ramon Dino. We've talked a lot about Breon Ainsley. We've talked a lot about Terrence Ruffin. But three days ago, Terrence posted an update too from the front. So this would have been around exactly five weeks out if this was three days ago. Terrence is looking really good here. I'm really impressed by how he's looking. I think he's, you know, I think he's the favorite to win. I think he's going to defend his title successfully. And I think by all measures, he looks like he's on track to do that. Now, the final story I want to talk about today, also a strength story related to the bench press. Actually, it is the bench press, but the equipped bench press world record has fallen again. It was beaten by 2.3 kgs. Bill Gillespie at age 62 was able to break the equipped bench press world record with a 512.5 kilos bench press, which is about 1,130 pounds, 1,129.9 to be exact. That was his third attempt. Um, Very impressive bench press at any age, but the fact that he did it at 62, very impressive, and I wanted to make sure that I included that in this video. So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you guys did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you have not subscribed already. And when you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification icon. And also, let me know in the comments below your Super Bowl predictions. Will it be the Bengals? Will it be the Rams? Who is going to win the Super Bowl here in a couple of weeks? Let me know. As always, I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.